I am currently 22 hours and 16 minutes into my 36 hour fast. And considering my live stream was a bit of an S show, I'm going to redo that video for you guys right now. Welcome to my 36 hour fasting challenge. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Neil Joy. I lost the majority of my weight doing a fasting kind of method. One meal a day, usually keto, making that metabolic switch, making my body burn fat for fuel as opposed to burning glucose for fuel. I want my body to burn that fat so I can lose that weight. Not only that, so I can better my health in mind, body, and soul because that's what fasting does for you. I started my weight loss journey off at 282 pounds. I made this transformation for my overall weight loss journey and this is my OMAD transformation. So throughout my weight loss journey, I have found the most success with keto, eating a high fiber keto diet. It's always been eating lots of vegetables and meats and things like fish and poultry. So that's what I'm about here. I'm about here trying to figure out this entire weight loss thing. Now, on my weight loss journey, I did count my calories, but as I'm more muscular and I'm learning things, yes, I'm going to continue to count my calories, but I'm not going to put so much emphasis on the calories. The emphasis should be on the foods that you're eating, which brings me to this entire 38 or 36 hour fast. I'm actually going to go 40 hours because I started my fast at 327 a.m. p.m. yesterday. So my fast is going to end at 327 a.m you know, in the future, but I'm not going to eat till 730. So that's going to be a 40 hour fast. And the reason why I am doing this 40 hour fast is to mainly for my mental health more than anything, because when you fast at 36 hours, you produce the neurotransmitter GABA, which has a calming effect. And at 24 hours of fasting, you get stem cells being produced in your gut microbiome, not your gut microbiome, but you get stem cells being produced in your in your intestines, which is key because that's where the gut microbiome comes to play. Because when you fast, you start off, starve off toxic bacteria, bacteria that will not serve you. And when you do that, you're going to balance out your cravings because guess what? Our gut microbiome controls our cravings. So yeah, what I wanted to talk about more on this live stream that was supposed to be a live stream that's now come into like this little video is this uh, video I watched from Dr. Jason Fung on the science of obesity, and it really opened up my eyes. He went through the entire history and how obesity started spiking in the 1980s. And he talked about the change in 1977 when the government introduced guidelines for nutrition. That's when things really started to change because basically they thought that fat was responsible for the increase in heart attacks. But when you look at this chart that I took from a screenshot from Dr. Jason Fung's video, is that Fat consumption never changed, even though the rate of heart disease did. So we are assuming that that was more really in relation to smoking and probably with the increase in sugar intake as well. So I was just watching this video and it was mind blown because they're at one point in 95 in the 90s where they were suggesting people eat sugar. How could you suggest people eat sugar? We are blaming fat for what sugar did. And the reason why I am jumping into this fast and why this might encourage you to continue on with this 36 hour fast is that when you fast, you help to reset your cravings. When you fast, you help to level out that blood sugar level. And when you fast, you turn your metabolism and you force your body to use fat as fuel. So when we eat foods, two things can happen. Our body will either store that food as fat fuel in the future, or it will burn off that calorie. So our basal metabolic rate. We obviously want our body to be burning it off. We want our body to be utilizing our basal metabolic rate, which will boost our metabolism, our BMR, instead of having our body store it as sugar, especially or store it as fat, especially if we are on a weight loss journey. So what determines this? Insulin. 
When we eat foods that spike our insulin levels to a point that is higher than the amount of insulin that's needed, guess what our body's going to do? It's going to force our body to store it as fat. And these foods are refined carbohydrates. We want to focus on eating foods that will not do this. So it's as simple, like nutrition should not be complicated, but it has gotten so complicated throughout the years because of interest involved, money involved, certain people wanting to push their products, you know, cereals, eat cereal, it's good for you. Look at the freaking food pyramid. They tell us to eat six to 11 servings of white bread, grains, and cereal. We started seeing a spike in obesity when we had this suggestion in 1977, just got worse in the 80s because we were being told to eat more refined carbs when that is not the solution. And it kind of just makes me like think, why are we being told to eat more refined carbs? Because the food industry is a business. It is a business. There's no business in fasting. You don't make money through fasting. You literally just tell people to stop eating and let their body sort it out ourselves. Like the human body is very smart. It can figure things out on its own. But we have to overcomplicate things because it's just human nature on unfortunately. So all this content and watching all these things really motivates me while I'm fasting because it makes me realize, okay, yes, I'm doing the right thing. I highly suggest when anyone is fasting, watch content on fasting, watch content on the science of fasting, watch content like my content right now where, you know, I'm encouraging you while we're doing the fast together. And I'm definitely going to be doing more community fasts in the future because I do enjoy fasting with you guys. We got this 36 hours. Let's get it and let's make it happen. If you made it this far into the video, just drop in the word mic because I am pissed off at my mic. I don't think it's my mic. I think it was OBS with the live stream, but I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much, El Boogie, for that super chat. Thank you for everyone who's given me a super chat in the last couple of days. Liam, Sarai, Manny, and I believe there is someone else else christy anderson for giving me super chat shout out to el boogie because i saw you gave me one earlier again so i appreciate you guys so much all these things help to push out my videos and to get more people being inspired by my journey being inspired by your community and making things happen for ourselves anyway see you guys later bonus video today take care bye